the response of France to Guinea's demand for independence in 1958 was marked by a complex and tumultuous series of events. Guinea, a French colony since the late 19th century, had been under colonial rule for several decades and was part of France's broader colonial empire in Africa. However, as the winds of decolonization began to sweep across the continent, Guinea's push for independence encountered resistance and retaliation from the French government. Welcome, viewers. Today, we delve into a significant chapter in history, exploring how France brutally responded to Guinea's demand for independence in 1958. Join us as we uncover the complexities of this pivotal moment, examining the events, motivations, and repercussions that unfolded during this tumultuous period. By shedding light on this historical episode, we aim to deepen our understanding of the struggle for independence and its lasting impact. So, let's embark on this journey of discovery and reflection together, but before that don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, together let's build a community of enthusiastic family. In the aftermath of World War II, the wave of nationalism and demands for self-determination began to grow stronger in many African colonies, including Guinea. The desire for freedom and independence resonated with the aspirations of the Guinean people, who sought to govern themselves and determine their destiny. In 1958, under the leadership of Ahmed Seko Touré and the Democratic Party of Guinea, Guinea called for a referendum to decide its political future. The proposed referendum offered Guinea two choices, to either remain part of the French Union under a new constitution that granted limited internal autonomy or to vote for complete independence. In an unprecedented move, the Guinean people overwhelmingly voted for independence, with over 95% choosing to sever ties with France. This result sent shockwaves through the French government, which had not anticipated such a resounding rejection of continued French rule. France, under the leadership of President Charles de Gaulle, responded to Guinea's demand for independence with a series of punitive measures and economic sanctions. These actions were designed to punish Guinea for its decision to break away from French control and to deter other colonies from following suit. The French government viewed Guinea's independence as a threat to its overall colonial empire and feared that other colonies might be emboldened to pursue their independence. One of the first steps taken by France was the immediate withdrawal of French civil servants, technicians, and military personnel from Guinea. This mass exodus of skilled workers had a severe impact on the functioning of the Guinean state, as it resulted in a significant loss of expertise and disrupted essential services and infrastructure. Additionally, France froze the financial assets of Guinea held in French banks, further crippling the country's economy. Furthermore, France actively discouraged other nations from providing support or recognition to independent Guinea. It pressured its allies and international organizations to isolate Guinea diplomatically and economically. The French government used its influence to block Guinea's access to international loans and aid, making it extremely difficult for the newly independent nation to establish itself economically and politically. In response to the French sanctions, Guinea adopted a policy of self-reliance and turned to the socialist bloc, particularly the Soviet Union and China, for support. Seko Touré's government implemented socialist policies, nationalized key industries, and sought economic assistance from non-Western powers. This move further strained the already tense relationship between France and Guinea, as it aligned Guinea ideologically with France's Cold War adversaries. France's response to Guinea's independence was not limited to economic measures. There were reports of covert operations and sabotage carried out by French agents within Guinea. These actions aimed to destabilize the Guinean government and undermine its ability to govern effectively. French intelligence agencies were accused of supporting dissenting factions and opposition groups within Guinea, exacerbating internal divisions and political tensions. The consequences of France's brutal response to Guinea's demand for independence were significant. Guinea's economy suffered from the loss of French financial support and the withdrawal of skilled workers. The country faced numerous challenges in building its institutions, infrastructure, and governance systems from scratch. Despite these difficulties, Guinea remained resilient and pursued its path towards nation-building and self-determination. It is essential to note that the strained relationship between France and Guinea began to improve gradually over time. In the 1970s, under the leadership of President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, France initiated a process of rapprochement with Guinea. Diplomatic relations were re-established, economic cooperation resumed, and some reparations were made for the damages caused by the French withdrawal. 
however, the scars of the brutal response to Guinea's independence demand continued to shape the dynamics between the two countries for years to come. On October 2, 1958, France declared that Guinea was no longer part of the French Union. France also withdrew all of its economic and military support from Guinea. This left Guinea in a very precarious position. The Guinean government, led by President Seko Touré, was determined to maintain its independence. Touré called on the Guinean people to rally behind him and to resist French pressure. He also appealed to the international community for support. The United Nations Security Council met to discuss the situation in Guinea. However, the Soviet Union vetoed a resolution that would have condemned France's actions. Despite the lack of international support, the Guinean government refused to back down. Touré nationalized French businesses and assets in Guinea. He also expelled French citizens from the country. France retaliated by imposing a blockade on Guinea. This made it difficult for Guinea to import and export goods. It also caused widespread economic hardship in Guinea. The Guinean people endured great hardship during the blockade. However, they remained united in their support for independence. Touré's government also received support from other African countries, such as Ghana and Mali. In 1960, France finally lifted the blockade on Guinea. This was a major victory for the Guinean people and their government. It showed that France could not prevent Guinea from being independent. However, the scars of France's brutal response to Guinea's demand for independence remain to this day. Guinea has struggled to develop economically since independence. It has also been plagued by political instability. Despite these challenges, Guinea has remained an independent country. The Guinean people have shown that they are willing to fight for their freedom and that they will not be cowed by threats or intimidation. As we conclude our exploration of France's response to Guinea's demand for independence, it is essential to acknowledge the profound significance of this historical event. The struggles faced by Guinea in its pursuit of self-determination serve as a reminder of the enduring fight for freedom and sovereignty. Let us honor the sacrifices made by those who fought for independence and recognize the ongoing struggles for self-determination around the world. May this knowledge inspire us to champion justice, equality, and the right of all nations to determine their destinies. Together, let us strive for a world where the voices and aspirations of all people are heard and respected. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey, and let us unite in the pursuit of a more just and equitable world.